This is the seventh video in a series covering the theory behind x86 buffer overflows, how they work, and how they can be exploited. Last time we looked at bad characters, what they are, and how to find them. In this video, we're looking at how we're going to direct code execution to our shellcode, looking at methods to jump straight there, as well as how we can use the stager to help us get there. So when we first ran through the buffer overflow in video two, we jumped straight to the address containing our shellcode. But this address won't always be consistent across runs and machines. It was viable for demonstration purposes as I was completing the steps concurrently on the same machine with memory protections disabled. Instead, we need to look to direct execution to an instruction included in memory within executables or loaded shared libraries. What we're looking for is an instruction to jump to our shellcode or stager via a register. For example, if the ESP is pointing to our shellcode, then a jump ESP instruction would be perfect. Let's consider our current scenario. Our overflow requires the prefix plus 2006 bytes to overflow the buffer and reach the return address. One key piece of information that you may remember from the last video is that once the target crashed due to the overflow, the ESP was pointing to the address directly after the overwritten return address, which is where we'd placed our character array. This makes a jump ESP the perfect candidate for us. Let's load up Immunity and Bond Server. So we're looking for a loaded module that includes assembly instructions that we need. To get a view of the modules that are loaded, we can use Mona. You don't necessarily need to view the loaded modules to proceed with exploiting the target. Great, we can see the loaded modules. Here we can see the memory protections that have been applied, such as address space layout randomization or ASLR. For the context of these exploits, we're looking for modules without these protections enabled. We can actually search across all of the modules easily for our jump instruction with Mona using Mona jump. By default, it emits any results that belong to a module with ASLR or rebase enabled. We specify the register that we want to jump to and then specify the bad characters as we want to ignore results that include any of the bad characters within that return address. This will search the loaded modules for the assembly instructions for jump ESP. In Immunity, the results window does hide automatically. We'll get there in a moment. Before we look at the results, we can also use the Mona Find tool to provide a similar function. Specifying the instruction that we want to look for, we specified it by the instruction instead of the opcode equivalent, and we can filter down to exclude the protected modules with our bad characters specified. This method can be used to look for more complex instructions if needed. Let's take a look at the results now. We'll click Window, Log Data to view it. Great, there are a few here that look like good candidates within ESSFunk.dll. And we can see that we've got the address of this instruction included. Due to the memory protections being disabled, this address should be consistent across runs and systems. Mona has filtered out the results with addresses containing bad characters, as that will break our payload. Let's take a note of this address here of 62, 50, 11, AF. Heading back to the main immunity window, we can click here to go to a specific memory address. Let's enter that address here. Great, we can see it contains FFE4, which is the opcode for jump ESP. Let's head back to our script to make a couple of changes to try and get to this jump ESP instruction. Again, we've just changed the payload section. We're finally able to replace our return address placeholder of B's with an actual address. Our address of 62, 50, 11, AF becomes AF, 11, 50, 62 due to the little endian ordering on the target. We've got our offset of 2006 bytes, and then we build our payload consisting of our prefix, 2006 bytes of A, and our new return address. Let's bring Immunity and Vuln Server back up. We've got the jump ESP instruction here still. Let's set a breakpoint here so the debugger will catch us when it reaches this instruction. We can either do that by right clicking and pressing here or pressing F2. Let's resume the program by pressing F9 now and let's run our new script. Great, we've hit the breakpoint that our jump ESP instruction, meaning we've successfully hit it. Let's see where the ESP is pointing to. Great, it's pointing directly underneath our return address of 62, 50, 11, AF. We've already confirmed we can write at least 500 bytes after the return address without breaking the buffer overflow. Let's step into the code execution by clicking here or pressing F7. 
and we could see that the address that the ESP is pointing to is loaded into the EIP as the next instruction for execution. This could include our shellcode. Now let's consider a slightly different scenario. Imagine the same buffer overflow, but we are restricted with how much we can write after the return address. Let's say if we write more than 10 bytes, then we're overwriting something else triggering a different crash and not our controlled one. So you may have noticed that the EAX is almost pointing to the start of our payload, but unfortunately includes the prefix of tron, space, full stop. We can use a stager to get around this. Essentially what we'll get the stager to do is shift the EAX along 6 bytes to move it to the start of our arrays, and then we'll jump to it. We'll need to find out what opcode represents these instructions. The Metasploit framework has a tool for this, called NASM Shell, which is pre-installed in Kali. Let's load it up. And here we can enter our assembly instructions that we want the opcodes for. So let's get the opcode for add EAX6 to shift the EAX6 bytes. Great, that's 83C006. Let's get the opcode for jump EAX now. Great, that's FFE0. So 83C006 FFE0 should add 6 bytes to EAX, shifting it to the start of the A's, and then jump there. This will form our stager and is only 5 bytes long. Let's look at a Python example to exploit this. Again, we've just changed the payload section here. We've got the return address with the address of the jump ESP instruction, and then we've got our stager that we've just constructed of 83C006FFE0, which will be add EAX6 and then jump EAX. Below this, we've got our offset of 2006 bytes, and then we build our payloads consisting of prefix, 2006 bytes of A, our return address, and finally our stager. Let's load up Immunity and Vaughn server again and restart it. We'll then resume the program with F9 and we'll search for the address of the jump instruction that we're going to write to the EIP and we'll set a breakpoint by pressing F2 and we can now run our script. Great, Immunity has hit our breakpoint. Let's view the stack in the memory dump. Scrolling up we can see our A's filling the buffer followed by the return address in little endian and finally our stager. You'll notice that the EAX is currently pointing to the start of our payload, including the prefix. Let's step into code execution with F7. Great, we can see that the address of our stager is in the EIP, and our stager instructions are the next to be executed with add EAX6 and jump EAX. Let's press F7 again. Awesome, we can see the EAX has now shifted and it's pointing to the start of our A's at address 010CF1EE. Pressing F7 again, executes jump EAX, which loads the EAX into the EIP, and we can now see that the next instructions are the start of our A's, which could later be replaced with shellcode. In this video, we looked at a few methods for directing code execution to somewhere within our payload. Next time, We'll finish developing our exploit to include some shellcode to allow us to execute system commands on the target. Thanks for watching.